Hey everyone, we are back with some more development of the Marble Machine 3. And in this stream, I'm going to take the bull by the horn and look carefully at vibraphone range and repeatability because this is the thing that is the most important design sketch in this project. I built two machines earlier and these machines had 11 notes only both of these machines. On the new machine, today, I'm planning for 47 notes. <laughs> <laughs> and as we have learned, feature creep is something that only occurs after you have frozen your feature set. So at this very point... We get by with a technicality. <laughs> <laughs> I found a loophole in the law of engineering. <laughs> This is not feature creep, my dear friends. Uh, it is a darling and it might be hard to pull off, but we're, uh, we are investigating my dream design requirements uh, currently. And it is actually a, a, an important thing. Uh, when I changed features on my previous machines, when the machine almost was already done, that is problematic feature creep. Right now, we have just a uh, honeymoon with some design darlings, yes. okay? We're over here dreaming, <laughs> just thinking about all the possibilities. We're sipping design pina coladas on a breezy <laughs> beach, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just leave us here in the sunset, listening to midnight for one little evening, okay? <laughs> and then back to reality tomorrow morning. I'm here with... All of our favorite Sir 3K in the pineapple haircut. Oh! On point. Pineapple is on point. Pineapple is strong today. Woo! Hello, everyone. Good to <laughs> see you. Good to have you here. Good to be here with my dear friend Martin. And he's a Slice of Sparta is so fast this stream because we already got a shout out from Slice of Sparta. Let's go, guys. Min max your vibraphone stats like you're playing an RPG. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you, Slice of Sparta. Brilliant as always. Thank you, Slice. And in this stream, as you can see up to the right, we're gonna start every stream with me making a sketch on the notepad on what I'm trying to do this stream. Which means that it's easier for all of you who are following along at home to send in suggestions and this discuss the topic for today in chat when you have the overview. After that, I'm going to show the module idea from Mandracula that came in the last stream. We're gonna CAD some vibraphone bars. I'm thinking about putting vibraphone bars in three rows. And then we have to look at it from the top view. I have to discuss the possibilities that a hydraulic bowden cables or bowden cables to the marble gates gives us with note placement and range, etc. Then we have to talk about these revival phone resonators and then we're going to be done. So let's start with a notepad sketch right here. So um, what I'm thinking about currently is that if we see, this is a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna make a top view sketch, I think. So. These are the white keys of the vibraphone. Tick, 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 I just want to point something out quickly here, Martin, yep. from 13 peeps. If we're talking about vibe range, Martin, note that the standard vibraphone range is F3 to F6, not F4 to F7. Is ah. it truth to that? That is probably absolutely true. Thank you. I'm just going to correct that uh, immediately in my um, uh, design requirement file. Here we go. I wrote uh, F3, I think you're right. F3 to F6. Ba-boom. Thank you. Thank you so much. 13 peeps. Gretzky in the chat, Eagle Eye in the chat. Um, Eagle Eye with the cherry on the top. <laughs> That's a Swedish artist, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Save tonight. That's the song. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> <Tonight>. <laughs> Fight when you're done, gone tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 I'll be gone. Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's the song. There we go. So, what I'm thinking about is 
dream scenario. Here comes Man Dracul, which is actually something from Harry Potter, right? The oh. screaming little plants. What? Ain't that the Mandrake? Thank you. So it's a combination between the little plants <laughs> and the Dracula, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. So here's the kicker. Kicker, kicker, kicker. Marble diameter, 40 millimeter. That's a dream for me. It's big. Go big or go home. That's what we always say here on Mid Garden Live. So if I keep these rows, 50 millimeter center center. My point here is that, so now I'm going to CAD the marble gate drop positions, is that we can make this zigzag pattern where these gates are 50 millimeter apart mm -hmm. everywhere. So just like a church organ with three keyboards, and then down here. Oh wow. Yeah, this is this is something. And then here is the kick drum. And maybe snare drum is. No, wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Here. Um let's try to minimize ourselves to one row. So let's take the eraser. Oh, that's a little big. So I'm just dreaming. I'm just sipping the signed pina coladas. One more. Give me one more. Yeah, take them all. Yeah. Now is the time. So here's the module from Mandra. Mandracula. <laughs> and here are the here's the snare drum, here's the hyatt, and here's the kick drum. Three rows of marble gates. Hang on. Over here is the bass dropper. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let me do some explanation texts. Hi hat. Kaffe med bulle. Snare. Here we go. <laughs> and I couldn't agree more. Here we go. <laughs> That's a good Swedish uh, Swedish nickname. Username. Bass. And of course, all of those others are vibraphone. Um, in my mind. Now we're going to turn the perspective. Uh, from the side, I'm gonna stay in the same sketch here. I'm putting it up here. Oh, yeah. Um, so, from the side view of the machine, this could result in a super cool waterfall design. So, we have one row of marble gates here, another one here. You know, that's a trigger word for chat, right? When you say cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, you're not <laughs> going to make it look cool. <laughs> A functional, yeah, a visual pleasing. Isn't that also triggering? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know how small chance it is that we are that we were ever going to exist, Sir Three K? That's true. Think, I, I think of that sometimes. <laughs> Especially when you're getting close to drawing marbles for some reason. <laughs> yes. So, here's my point. If we can find uh, a way to feed these with marbles like this, mechanically, we should have uh, a simple life because of the Bowden tubes. They can go a little bit through and a little bit wherever. Then this could maybe be a potential to have these many, um, these many. Uh, a potential game changer. Mm, yeah, you could say. But 
it is kind of on the optimistic side. But let me tell you about the lowest road uh, row because this is the idea from man. How is actually the username? Mandracule. Mandracule. Um, To have the extra slots, we talked about this in the previous stream, um, to make a note repeat fast, like in the D note there is repeating fast. We have one module, we have one normal vibraphone, a full-size vibraphone, plus 10 exchangeable slots. And this module drops straight in and out. So the technicians of the machine over here, they can prepare a kind of a slot and just chugunk slot it in with resonators and everything and slot it out. So we have two sets of these slot uh, vibraphone things. And that little slot would be this row here in my mind right now. Then we have a little bit of an issue because let's say that this right here is the note C and this right here is a note C. So when you repeat them, they're going to be further away from each other in the microphone, for example. So that's just something to think about. And with this preamble, let's try to see how insane we are in CAD. Because it's going to be difficult. And just to clarify there, it's it's kick and snare down there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a bad writing. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't see what it was saying. No, okay. Mm. Kick. Kick drum. There we go. So, and what I like with this idea is that we can have one and the same marble gate everywhere. We can have one and the same type of marble everywhere. So we can just make a module marble gate that we put everywhere. So no different marble sizes, no different marble materials. I think that is like a nice modular um, design idea. This is super daunting for me to go straight into this because this is this is the thing holding the like it doesn't really matter. I can't it holding everything else back. I can't go super forward with with these things because I don't know how many channels we need which means I don't know how thin we need to make them. So, um, you know what? We just need to start somewhere. That That's exactly it. Um, and I'm starting with the pie in the sky, most ambitious yeah. solution. Yeah. And then let's see where we run into the obvious. Um, yeah. Uh, this is the time for that. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go then. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. So the module idea I showed you, and we have to now uh, get a grip on the real size of the vibraphone bars. And I went over to find the vibraphone bars from the Marble Machine X Oh, cab. beautiful. I have them here. They're beautiful. And it's also a little bitter, bittersweet seeing like how much, how much we worked on all this. Just to see it all fail. What was the main thing that failed on these vibraphones? Or was it just the, the hits on them? The plates themselves, the whole system with the muting there, did that work? Yeah, so let's give me... I have my image that I, I don't have it anymore. Um, the context. Uh, there yeah, we there we go. Uh, we'll, we'll do this for now so people can see it clearly so um turns out a lot of people think the margin x were just close to working and they don't understand why, why i quit it and i was <laughs> disappointed with me and my decision making on this so i actually made this context image and put it on the website so if you see people there you can always send them the website link to this image and i think for most obvious is that there's no space for the resonator pipes for the vibraphone and it's only one so in real life to be able to play a song and then play another song is impossible on this machine 
um, it was just no space for the resonators. And actually, you can see that in CAD, because if we go to CAD, Richard, a fantastic Ev engineer from UK, made this. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so, first of all, you can see how tight everything is. Oh, wow. But secondly, we need to change length of all these between each and every song. So how do you do that? You basically you don't. Yeah. So basically, so kudos to Richard for actually doing this. But uh, this is what I mean that since we didn't go through this the design requirements on on, on this machine, uh, things were there was no space for anything. And to go a little bit before, I am a little bit worried about where to put the resonators on this machine. Because now I move the wheels closer. I wanted to put the resonators here before. And, oh yeah, I should actually, I'm going to actually sketch this as well. Mm -hmm. So, these drums needs a physical connection with the lower loop wheel here. But I was thinking, I wanted to put the resonators straight down. Now I'm thinking, what if we... Do something clever. Um, so if we look at this from the top view. Um, so here's another vibraphone from the top view. Like this. So normally the resonators go straight down. But here comes the programming wheel. Let's say there's drum channels here. And there's... Um, snare channels here and here are sustain channels so basically this area becomes a red area and this as well because we have mechanical links there so the resonator pipes can't go there but what if we pull the pipes so that we group them in these sections so instead of spreading the resonator pipes on the front, like on the thumbnail, a pipe from this note goes over and comes down here. So we, we gather all the pipes in, in these groups. Okay, yeah. Uh, because the vibraphone are much higher than the drums. So height-wise we have the... So these are just the places where the long pipes comes down. Plus it's only the first channels so if we go back to CAD do you understand what I mean there? Yeah kind of and also there is in chat some people are wondering why do you even need to change resonator pipes and I guess that is because there is different tuning in depending on the plate right? Yeah but the, the idea now is that on these that you see on your screen right now on these 37 ones we're not changing them at all we're no. not tuning them at all we're building them. We're building a real vibraphone, full size vibraphone, and we leave those in place. Yeah, that was the big concern with the MMX that we have to change the rest yeah. of the pipes because of the tuning, right? So we can put them into a tight space as long as they don't collide with anything else. Yeah, and we don't have to touch them ever. And we can use the same because the individual bars are not going to move. Um, let me see if I can pull up. So we can use the same hanging uh, mechanism as as on a classical marble machine. So we don't have to have uh, one holder per plate. We can just have a string through all the plates. As on a classical vibraphone, I mean. But the 10 bars repeat module that are there so we can repeat notes faster, those resonators have to change. But then if we go back to mandracule ideas, um, that can be done off the machine. So um, when you put this green plate in here, which has a certain frequency, which means that the green resonator pipe has a certain length, that's done off the machine by the technicians, which means that on the machine itself, there just has to be space. There, It doesn't have to be room for you to actually access it and change it on the machine. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I am um, 
I am kind of skeptical, but I'm also a little bit excited. <laughs> um, Cola Boy XL. Is it possible to make all pipes the same length and then add pipes on the tip away from the tight area? Yes, um, that was one of our solutions. But the problem is that some pipes, um, basically, some pipes are so short, so the tight area are, it's a long, it's a big range. You can see this longest pipe. Here we try to get all the pipes to end up at the same location because we had the idea to put microphones on that end there mm -hmm. under the pipes. Um, because there are open resonators here. Um, also, fun fact, closed resonators are half the length. Wait. Revelation. Wait. What did I... What Did I just say that closed resonators was half the length? So in my vibraphone, we're using closed, closed resonators. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Och Alexander Larsson undrar här, hur står det till med busgrabbarna idag? Ja, <laughs> det är bara toppen med busgrabbarna idag, det ska jag säga dig. Har aldrig varit bättre. Ja, ah, det är så gött här, vet du. Det är helt underbart. <laughs> hur står det till själv? Eller hur, Alex? Busgrabben. <laughs> ja, busgrabben. <laughs> Som Swedish derailment right there. Ja, Jajamensan, det är som i vampyrfilmen med det hemliga språket. De bara körde på svenska. Jajamän. Det, det är helt fantastiskt. Um, so, the reason, there's a nice physics reason why a closed resonator has half the length is because the sound comes down bounces to the closed wall and goes up again. So the wavelength is double um, thanks to the fact that you have closed the pipes. So when you open the pipe again, um, you have to make it twice as long. So perhaps I'm overestimating how much space we need. If, you, if we can see here for the low notes, uh, so we have to calculate. Um, oh yeah, we have them here, I'm stupid. What's this second try? Oh. So as you can see, for, for these high notes, uh, these open ones are only... Let's check this second one. Um, I did wrong there. Sorry for that. Like 17 centimeters, which means that for this note, enclosed one, it will be less than 10 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Basically, this probably gives us the space for most, I'm gonna remove me. There we go. For most of the notes, we have more space than what we need. Straight, just straight, straight down. Only for some long ones, we need to go down and we have to make sure that there's nothing in the way. Mm. Yeah, the whole connecting the drums with the loop drum. Yeah. That's the tricky part. Yeah. Then have, I think we talked about it earlier, you could have resonate the pipes go out between the drums. Exactly. Yeah. Alexander Larsson, haha, det är fint med mig. Skoj att se er som arbetar så flitigt. Thank you. <laughs> We're having some inside baseball with a Swedish friend here. It's very, very, very social with the international audience, but exotic. Yeah, we we have to try at least. Um, two great things about Sweden: tap water and berries. <laughs> That's the only two things I miss. Oh my! In France. <laughs> And me. That goes without saying, sir, 3K. <laughs> so, let's get... Tiavor Kuruma, put high notes where you need the space. Yeah, so this is a very pragmatic suggestion. Um, 
And I'm battling. Because I do want people to be able to see the music being played. So I want the low notes on the left side. Okay. Um, we could even fill the whole top row up. And, and ditch the standard piano pattern. Oh, maybe we should just... So this is... Um, let's go to the design requirements. Um, if we go here. These are just my, my vibraphone. Um, I'm going to write your suggestion. High notes where resonator pipes would collide. I'm just noting here. And also full top row or standard piano pattern. Like how sacrilege would it be to just put things um to just ditch this black and white keys pattern but there is something around it so to make and also when i improvise on this i can play manually on a full size normal vibraphone it's kind of cool easier for you as well yeah but it's not from from form yeah it is form from function because you have to be able to play the music so kind of a big deal <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um and remember we're in the we're sipping the sign pina coladas we are in the dream state right now yeah uh, we are everything is everything is a little bit possible right now and then we're going to get down to reality a, quick and hard <laughs> um, let me open the vibraphone design file oh let's do that so I have designed the vibraphone in the drum kit assembly I'm thinking of lifting this out and starting over somewhere else mm -hmm. um, because I'm thinking of I'm just thinking about how to, yeah, yeah, yeah. The I'm gonna start a new design, which is the vibraphone, the Sirius CAD. So let's do 11, 11, oh one, vibraphone assembly. And let's CAD this flat and joint it in place later. Or should we cut it in position? No, we should cut it in position. So what we do then is that we're going to um, derive our skeleton into this design. So I'm opening this CAD skeleton and under create, I go for derive there. And I'm deriving it into an existing design. I'm selecting this thing. And if we ever do parameters, I need to check favorite to be able to have global parameters for the whole project. Ah, oh, yeah. And then we're choosing the vibraphone. Design that we created. There's a skeleton. So new component. Vibraphone master sketches. What happened now? Vibraphone master sketches. I'm stricken by this. <laughs> severity of the moment it's not the word I was looking for <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing I just love it so much 
Mm, I can tell you're a little bit nervous about yeah, this. I'm, so uh, many solutions. Yeah, it's uh, we have to just start somewhere. And now my components uh, have this color line, and I have to find out where I put that off. Is it Control N? You remember, or is it K? Oh, uh, Shift N. Shift N. Yeah, that was it. I found it out the other day. Check this out. Pretty cool thing. Shift N. Oh. Party mode. Yeah, so you can kind of like... <laughs> I mean, this is helping us so much. This is exactly what we need to do now. <laughs> Are you dreading these decisions? <laughs> I, this, is, this is tough, tough stuff. Yes. Answer is yes. So I'm going to start with creating the vibraphone plane. So yeah, we're going to lay the foundations here for our vibraphone. So actually great. It's great, but I, I, I am dreading the hell out of this. But it's the thing that we need to do. So that's good. So, 20 degrees angle, perhaps. And we are going to make a plane at angle on this little line. Boom. So, I always try to use sketch lines to make my planes. Because that's good. So, let's hide everything else for now. And we're going to project this little dot this little dot is going to be our um, what why do you disappear when I hide that sketch uh oh project yes Okay, I'm lost for words. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. <clears throat> yeah, so I think like this really marks the start of uh, like I've been taking some easy low hanging fruit in the beginning of the process to just block everything out and it feels like things are happening and this now it becomes tougher. Uh, from here yeah actual decisions needs to get made but the caveat of that is that we can't redo them because we're in CAD it's not a physical machine yet it's a very good point so don't worry too much here Martin this is not set in stone that's a very good point Something is wrong here. I'm projecting to my new sketch. Wait, is sketch... Let me try something. Ah, okay. That's strange. It's some kind of bug, I think. Anyway. Never mind, let's uh, start. Well, this sounds interesting from Mike Perry. If you're having trouble deciding on designs in the future, you should use something called a decision matrix. It will critically and logically choose what design is best based on the design requirements. Decision matrix. I want to take the blue pill out of decision matrix right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me write that down. That sounds that sounds 
That sounds like a nice rabbit hole. Decision matrix. Is that an advanced pros and cons list? I don't know. For decision making. Can you search? Uh, can you Google that? I can. That. Interesting, Mike. Thank you. Stuck in the decision matrix. So a let's... decision matrix is a list of values in rows and columns that allows an analyst to system systematically identify, analyze, and rate the performance of relationships between sets of values and information. Elements of a decision matrix show decisions based on certain decision criteria. How? So mm, all the marble machines have been mega complex and it's because everything has to do with everything else so the decision matrix it was cool to learn the word is like super super complicated and i made it easier for myself because time and money hasn't even been like part of it before so in the real engineering process you have also like time and money constraints in the decision matrix uh, probably those are like super important in the decision matrix. It's a management tool. It's a graph that you can where you can determine parameters, which is the hard part from Kyle Russell. And Dylan said it's like pros and cons, but with numbers. Okay, super interesting. It's it's. Um... That's probably a little bit how I'm using CAD. I'm this for me, like this CAD file is kind of a visual decision matrix for, for me, I think. Like I'm I'm doing this blocky CAD file and sketching things out to kind of visualize the and I think like very soon. So, so this is this is how I'm planning to do this process. I'm going to keep on doing this a little bit, but I think kind of pretty soon it's going to be more and more um, design requirements like this um, and decision matrices. We're gonna get down into theory more and more, and then we're gonna cross feed between visual and like theory. Slice of Sparta says here, you could use an impact difficulty matrix as well. A good visual way to make sure you pursue feasible, cost-effective goals that will have the highest possible impact. A simple tool. What, what was the name of, of the tool? Uh, impact difficulty matrix. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to note that down as well real quick here. Impact difficulty matrix. So this time, if someone remembers that the hit point of these vibraforms bars are not center, should not be center. So if someone remember, we painstakingly, I painstakingly angle grinded these bars and re-welded them to move the hit point like two centimeters to get a better sound. So in CAD, I'm going to take all these measurements from the real machine and put the hit points here in CAD. So that's why right now, this lowest vibraphone note, the middle point here is not the hit point. So that's why I'm preparing this um, as a kind of a um, hit point meter per note so and I guess it would be great if we can make the hit points on a long line oh yeah you like that oh yeah because if we can have that on a straight line it will make it easier for us to attach all the marble gates so let's hope for that and now, let me see how I can 
Jonathan Lindeskog design idea. The rose on the vibraphone can overlap much more since the hit point of the ball is constant. Yes, good, good point. Uh, so let me show you that in full. I think uh, what Jonathan means is that instead of having them like this and giving a lot of space for playing, you can move the top one over the other one much more. Yeah. But only problem is the resonator pipe coming down. Oh yeah. You can't cross with the resonator pipe, which is a little bit of shame. So um, you you still have to be able to clear the pipe with the resonator pipes tubes. So you will almost not mix. But we sh you're right. We should we should make as much space as we can. So let me see how I'm going to do this. I want to have not really a rectangular pattern. So I want a lot of individual rectangles. I think I just need to copy paste and constrain these things. <laughs> Mikolai Sabinski, I still see a lot of problems with the placement of electronics, especially since there are l a lot of surfaces not available for such elements and it will take a lot of space. But this time around, there won't be that much electronics, right? No, but you're absolutely right. Uh, microphones. Yeah. We need to design uh, microphones in the CAD. So, um, absolutely right about that. Um, let's see what we can do here. I think if we put, let's just make the hit point, um, being on a vertical line. And I see a, pretty, a lot of people in chat talking about how about angling the top row bars so you don't lay on one in one another you can like ah, angle them Gretzky's in the chat I love that suggestion uh, let's that's love this audience this community we have for uh, for instance Kamakaji top one a different angle and uh, I don't want to choose a name. How about angling them? So um, here's the here's the reasoning I think they're after. So if we have all rows at the same angle like this, um, the resonator comes this angle. But we we will maybe have a problem with the with the bounce if we do uh, angle like this. I'm over exaggerating. See that? Oh yeah. The tube is clearing. Yeah. And we're gaining um, super good tool to have in the toolbox. I think this is what what's being implied. Um, marbles will bounce differently on this angle compared to this angle. But maybe a small little shift uh, could give a lot of room. It will look cool also. I know that's not a requirement, <laughs> but it would look cool to have them in different angles. Also, just, by the way, oh, so, sorry, Anna, go let's ahead. just consider all the problems it could be with all the bounces. You could technically also have them like 90 degrees and have a marble lane that's like shooting it backwards. So you have the back row 90 degrees up. Yeah, I don't want that, but... That's you. You can do it. You can. Yeah. But it's not right. No, no, no. It's not <laughs> right. But you can do it. Now I'm also thinking. Maybe the res. Wait. Look at this. So the resonator tube is not center on this one. Which means that if we put the other row upside down. This is what I mean. Since this is off center, we can instead of having. Instead of doing this, if we 
put this upside down, we can go over much, much more. Whoa. Whoa. Nothing broke, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Only our dignity. What? That's long gone. What? <laughs> oh, oh you, changed. you changed something there with your plate. That's a shame they couldn't see that happening. <laughs> okay. Also, we can put, like, if the center point is offset, like it is here, we can put the other row upside down, actually. No, wait, that would just move the... Mm, okay. Let me see what happens here. So if I put 345 on the next one. And Robert Towell asking me a question here. Hannes, how have the streams been you enjoying yourself? And I have to say I'm enjoying myself thoroughly. I mean... Me and Martin have worked together for a lot of years. I view, I usually edit the videos with Martin. But, I mean, this is the rawest kind of videos you can make, right? And I enjoy nothing more in life than watching this brain work. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my greatest hobbies. And now you all can watch it as well. We're having fun together. Hanging out is such a big part of this uh, third process. Me... Me alone uh, with the, with feel with feeling like a failure for three years straight into in the forest was also not the best the best way for me to work. So it helps a lot. Yeah. Um. So we recorded the the original Marble Machine video together at Bakaplan, and we call uh, we call the studio Bakaplan two point zero. Yeah, we're back where we all started. Uh. So it's it's the same feeling. So. I'm going a little slow here because I'm thinking how to make all this a little bit parametric later. Um, maybe I should... Yeah, I'm... Basically, I shouldn't be too ambitious here. I'm going to remove this one. I shouldn't be too ambitious with the parametricness. I'm going to do the dreaded rectangular pattern. And in that row, we want uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14, 21, 22. So let's do 22. And Lutz Liemann with a nice super chat here and a question. Hannes 3K, you should also think about placing some micro cameras direct on the machine to get some nice video footage. And absolutely, that's something to think about. When the machine is designed, we can look at those cool extra features. Mm, huh? Maybe even maybe maybe that should be maybe that should be part of the design process. Can be, but lower on the scale, right? Music first, oh. micro cameras later, oh. or um design uh, for microphone placement placement design for micro camera placement i mean if it's a design requirement it's a design requirement so because this machine is going to be visually less interesting uh, than everything else because I'm doing the form from function and then some micro cameras on good, really good positions will help. Um, Just have something quick here from Discord. Let's take a quick look there about resonator pipes. Could the resonator pipes be 3D printed to make them as compact as possible while keeping the required volume? These are 3D printed did reduce, by the way. Could that work with uh, resonator pipes to have them custom? Such a cool suggestion.
Yes. I'm processing. <laughs> I'm I I am unaware if um the acoustic difference if the sound wave has to bend a lot. Um so is there better volume if it's just a straight pipe or is it same? I don't know. Um It's a very interesting idea, although I think the 3D prints would be um, kind of uh, super big and expensive. But it's an interesting idea. Thank you so much to G-Dome on Discord. Super cool. The kind of out of the box thing that I never thought of myself. So basically, I'm just doing a blocky vibraphone here to postpone. No, I'm not postponing these hard decisions. I'm going full, full on here. Um, so. Here's our first row of vibraphone plates. I already did this once before, but I did it in another, another design. I should have started from that. Never mind. Let's extrude the plates themselves. Doro says there sounds like it's worth a small test with those resonator pipes. And that's absolutely something that can be done in the future. Yeah, I mean, it, it would also be... No, it's a super cool idea. Um, I'm going to actually leave these holes because it's the... It's the figure hit points. It's, it's the hit point. And Sir 3K is uh, becoming an engineer. Yeah, by proxy. By proxy. So, what about the second row? Let me go to... Uh, so here's our three rows. Oh, this is cool, because if we make... Okay, so now I'm getting a little bit excited. It's oh, always like yeah. this. <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, and, and then, then ooh. and then I start. So if this is our three rows, right? We can then move around. <laughs> Tyler Smith with a generous super chat and brilliant comment right here. It's super cool that Martin took such a long break, especially specifically so he could build Hannes 3000 a new body. <laughs> such a great friend. <laughs> and I can just agree with you, Tyler. He's a really good friend. He uh, spent those months doing the Lord's work for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So now we have here, we have the three different um, vibraphone rows, and now I actually angle them differently here. 65, 70, and 75 to be able to pivot the resonator pipes away. Um, and I mean, yeah, we could even have it yeah, okay, that 3D printed thing opened up some ideas anyway. Yeah. So let's put the midpoint at 240, and this midpoint is at 570. Just something. It looks like this uh, uh, 80s keyboard stand with the, when you have three keyboards on the Ooh, same stand. Oh, yeah. You like that, Ooh, right? Oh, yeah. So let's... <laughs> Name this um, Vibra Side Master Sketch. And this is Vibra Manual 1, Vibra, it should not be manual, Key 1, Key 
uh, plane one, key plane middle. There we go. Yes. And then we're going to um, create a new plane and a new sketch. And this sketch is going to call Vibra key plane upper. Good spelling. <laughs> You're a pro. Engineer galore. Yeah. Sir yeah. Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my whole body is tense when I have to d deal with this. Um, but uh, because it feels like I am... It's like I'm waiting for um, for information on something that both can make me super happy or or super disappointed. It's that feeling. Yeah, we're here to virtually massage you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then let's S -s loosen up that stiffness right there. Oh, some design pina coladas. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to project this point again, and then I'm going to draw this line again, like I did last time. Let's do this. And now I can remove the other sketches. Nice. An interesting question from Tomas Turbado. Question for Hannes 3K. How much of the design is decided by Martin? H3K or other members? Does Martin have the final say? It's a, is it all unanimous? How do you decide what to do when you disagree? And here, as we have learned, this is Martin. He, he has final say in this. Uh, so he, he is the design maker here. He's, he's designing this. But we have such a wonderful audience that comes with brilliant ideas all the time that helps Martin along. But um, not many designs are being made by me, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> I mostly just sit by Martin and say, woohoo. You read the chat. Yeah. And, uh, and, and some write the stream. Some ideas inform you about the signs you have to make. Yep. No, it's a um, benevolent uh, dictator um, uh, government uh, yep. in this. Um, so uh, I find like in artistic processes that the most fun thing is to do share it with others. But a lot of like a lot of super successful bands have had like this one dictator band leader bruce springsteen is called the boss because of this reason acdc uh, no maybe no maybe that's a bad you had some other example um i mean if you see historically at bands who succeed they have clear or clear like roles and yeah that's it they have clear yeah they are not they're not just like dogs who when they meet each other they have to like just fixed uh, like hierarchy yeah and um i I, th I think so many people rather just want to be part of a process where the hierarchy is actually been set yeah so that's not like a point of concern yeah i and mean in pop modern music now you have the band ghost from sweden and they're super famous right now and they they have a clear hierarchy it is the main guy who decides everything. <laughs> I think it's kind of needed. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with people who can be in flat organizations and having fun and things are happening. Yeah. Um, but in a lot of bands... Sometimes when it looks like they're doing everything together, it's also a little bit of a spiel. Yeah. So how should I do this? Where should I constrain? How should I constrain this? 
Let me do it like this. Uh, down to the hit point, okay. H. Doug. Beatles and Pink Floyd are examples of bands that needed the leader but didn't really deal with it the best. <laughs> It's the new documentary is amazing because they just lost their leader, didn't they? The Brian Epstein or what was his name, the manager? Yeah, yeah, for Beatles. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is valid. Let's now repeat what we did before. And this is like uh, people misunderstand uh, blockchain technology a lot. They refer it to cash cash grabs and people scamming other people and like proof of work, which is like bad for the environment and stuff like that. So every time I mention this, like there's people are so angry. Yeah, uh, I'm so I, I but I, I, I think I can understand when when you don't when you don't really know where the puck is going with this, but the DAO technology, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, is a brand new governance invention. So um, um, that's why I've been talking about it. And I think like from what I've seen, like organizing a community, uh, I think the DAO uh, technology will be super, super um, interesting for the future. Um, basically, it's self organ if it's done right, it's like self-organizing a lot of people uh, t towards like a common goal. And um, so for me, like when I, when I, when we talk about this, I don't know if there are going to be like DAO bands in the future, um, but probably, yeah, yeah, probably. Yes. Um, definitely DAO organizations is going to be a big thing in the U S you can actually, when you like, report that you want to start a LLC, you can also now choose DAO in some in some states. Okay. Um, spacing 50 millimeters. Yeah, uh, I, I know too little about all that, but a big eye opener for me was to learn that, okay, blockchain wasn't, wasn't the money thing. <laughs> blockchain was technology that, that's being used. Exactly. And then, yeah, because, yeah, you only get the uh, hateful headlines in press and all you see is those trigger words and like, oh, oh, scams. <laughs> yeah, it's it's what it's known for currently. And, and the thing that I think I'm seeing is where it's going to be like in five years or something like that. Yeah. Uh, this is a cool feature when you have a rectangular pattern and you don't want to make it completely um even because I want to remove the black keys, you can use a suppress feature. And when you choose it, you see you get these tick boxes. Ah. So now I can de choose where I want this to repeat. So we start with F, so we want three black keys and then pause. Two black keys, pause. Ah. Nice, huh? Three, pause, two, pause, three, pause, two, and this is F, so this makes sense. So this way you can use the rectangular. It's actually the best demo ever for, for this suppress feature. You can use the rectangular pattern, but you can remove the, the space between the black keys. Oh, wow. That's a little neat right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you remember, I had a video where I was standing with a hammer and I said, like, I can use this hammer to crush my neighbor's windows or to help my neighbor repair their roof. And this is like, you have to be, just like a design requirement should be design agnostic. When you discuss a tool or a technology, um, like explosives, you're using explosives for um, like uh, horrible in invasions, and you're using it uh, for construction work. So this always gets me that people think one thing bad, same thing always bad in all applications. Yeah. Like, and that's that's where where it's, the, historically it's always like that with new technologies. Yeah, I guess, but the, to have the intellectual honesty to at least say like, yeah, an apple uh, is good when you're eating it. An apple can be bad if you leave it somewhere in your flat and it's becoming rot 
rotten and it smells and it makes mold. <laughs> <laughs> I have such a bad example. <laughs> so we have the upper manual. Ooh. Ooh. And we have the lower manual. Um, manual? Yeah, um, plain. plain. Okay. Let me make this a little bit like I did the other one as well, just for the sake of it. So and I, I I just I just it just makes me not want to be part of and like discuss anything uh, publicly when when most often when I see people being angry at each other at each other's throat online they're just plainly not talking to, about the same thing. So I realized that the hard way every time I mentioned this. <laughs> <laughs> we're just not we're just not discussing the same thing, but people are still like uh, very quick to uh, to being very emotional. Yeah. So um yeah. Let's do this. But the cool thing the cool thing that it will enable, like a community like ours, is that it would move. It would not be like it would move everyone from being uh, members in the community to being like owners of the community, um, and that's it. It would n- not be um, people just like. G- helping out um, with my project like that, it could be like it. You you could make oh that worked right away. You could make the fans becomes collaborators um, instead. I'm just talking. I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking about what the technology is enabling. So basically, it's an empowerment of of the members of a community from just like being at the base level liking something to participating um it's very vague and people are gonna hate on it but i i think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens the future (laughs) <laughs> exciting now I can show you another good trick this took me some time but 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 it's my apprehension in front of this whole subject with, with the vibraphone is that if we now enable here in the browser tree the show dimension then we can control these manuals right here so I think uh, the height is too much difference so let's lower the top one and I can do that that quickly so that's nice if I want it if we look at it from the top and I feel, oh, we can get a little bit more over, I can just extend this to 260 and it slides down. Oh, that way. nice, 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 nice. So I, the whole thing, we have it here. I want to move everything. I have very good control over these. So once we start to get this in to the main module model, we're actually getting somewhere. And for example, the brilliant idea that people sent in before, if we want to angle this more, I can do 60 here. Oh, yes. Cool, huh? You're doing engineering. <laughs> <laughs> the hype, man. So how much, uh, how much blockchain hatred do we have in chat? Almost nothing. Wow. Everyone is, uh, everyone is talking about the tools and the technology and not the applications. Love it. <laughs> Love it, love it. Perhaps love they it. listened to us. They wanted to hear what we had to say first. Okay, it's gonna come now. Um, it can't be wrong to be curious about new technology. No, and it was like I think Einstein has some good quotes about like the atomic bomb and stuff like that. Or your analogy, you or. Uh, most you talk about uh, the whole thing with record labels and Spotify, how that was so was heresy when that first came. 
Yeah, so so basically it's very easy. Like uh, fiat money is CDs. Yeah. It's um, maybe not, I don't know, but like everything is going to be digitalized. And, and, and of course, maybe people are more comfortable with their countries, governments owning uh, like money and stuff and making digital versions. So digital dollars, digital Swedish crowns and like that. But um, just like vinyl records is like some, more of a collectible and CDs is like... What is that? Is even C- <laughs> is even CDs a collectible? No, just some people have it in their mind. They want to keep their collection going, I think. But yeah, it's a cool format, but you can't... It's so... I mean, what what are they good for? So you can talk about vi- <laughs> same with video cassettes. Like, do we like that we have YouTube, like the the library of Alexandria for ten dollars per month without ads? Do we enjoy that, or would we rather go back to um, some some I don't even remember almost uh, renting VHS mm. cassettes? Um, let's make the third manual. And um, here we come, the bad is get to. There is so much wrongdoing and stupid applications of, for example, NFTs that people judge the whole thing by its covers. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. And I can totally, totally like um, um, understand, understand that. Um, where am I? I have to create a sketch. And a really generous contribution here by Kamakaji. A really generous super chat. And he just wants to say here, just a quick point on DAOs. You can accomplish the same democratic governance system without using the blockchain. The issue with blockchain is that they're binding and final and are thus sus- susceptible to mistakes. Simply holding votes work- works too. Thank you so much for for n- nice discussion and, and contribution. So, um, yeah, so the binding is the, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. Um, and then is it a bug or is it a feature because it's the um, it's the fact that it's some the, the fact that it's binding is also why it creates trust between people mm. so so you can actually collaborate um and trust each other through it's basically like a digital contract that is that you can trust and So is it a feature or is it a bug? But it's a it's a very interesting point. So when you when you do votes, it's h- kind of hard. Who counts the votes? Um, then you have to trust, and I think that's the cryptographic invention that you trust code, you trust the cryptography, and you don't have to trust like a, a gatekeeper or a middleman. Um, that's what I think will, why it will, it's an interesting technology. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's and just also because there is one of the most brilliant usernames I've seen in a while here. We have from Obi Juan Kenobi. How- <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. How it's used right now, NFT is BS, but it could be great if used well. And I guess that's a lot of the consensus out there that it's tricky it's tricky but you can also see a glimpse into the future what it can be right yeah definitely skating where like i realized when i started to talk about it i think in this case i think i am skating where the puck is going on this for the future um and when i was discussing like where the puck is going people are of course discussing where the puck is right now and then, then, then I realized that that it was better to not discuss it so much because then we're not discussing the same thing. 
Um, and also a follow up here from Kamikaji after that generous super chat. Uh, just says, I care so much about this project and want it to succeed. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Of oh, you. Thank you so much. And uh, it's. Um, what should I say? I have this feeling that if I just allow myself to do what I want to spend this time, I feel honestly like so many people around me are just like, I met an old friend. He like looked me into the eye and said, Martin, I'm so worried about you. And like, uh, like, what are you actually doing? What's happening with everything? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, I understand what he means. I of course understand what he means, but I don't know. It's like this Nietzsche thing where like become who you are. Like uh I think like if I if I just if I just allow myself to do this, I will stand on that stage with my arms upright with the functional marble machine one day. And then all this madness is going to just feel great. Why are these lines blue? <laughs> So what I wanted to say in the last comment is that recently I've been thinking like the key, a key, I think I I think I I think we can get this done. Um Ah, uh -huh, here. Sorry. This is the missing missing little point. Um But my main worry is to um it's a social pressure I feel kind of, it's that I kind of feel stupid for trying again. And it's it's such a nice journey for myself to just learn to ignore what other people think. Yeah. And just take the, take the like, take the fact that people think that I'm, I'm, I'm lost uh, and uh, prove them wrong on this 3000. Yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah. That is why we're here. So let's make a rectangular pattern talking about <laughs> being stuck in old patterns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one here. Uh, nice super chat from James Cheney. Vintagota music is my phone alarms each morning. And I can't think of a better way to wake up every morning. <laughs> Fantastic. That's fun to hear. That's so fun to hear. I really want to make new songs. And I, I just accepted the fact that my artistic process is like super linear. So I'm like, yeah, I want to make new music like with a functioning marble machine. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am talking to, um, I talked to Marcus the other day. Um, um, the drummer. Yeah, Mark is the drummer. To to um, book some studios and have some jam sessions in Stockholm. I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Um, like, um, to just play, see where see where things are going. Here we go, module three. So this is interesting. So this is going to be the one that is slotable. These are the extra notes. Wait, 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 wait. Extra notes, maybe they sh Yeah, this is for later. Maybe the extra notes should be up here because of the resonators has to come in and out. Hmm. So now I'm randomly going to choose. I'm going to choose the ones that are in the spaces where the black keys are not. Here we go. James says, you're not mad, Martin. As a product designer, the first prototypes are never perfect. It's normal for a product to have 10 to 20 prototypes before it works the way you want. Doing it in three is pretty good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. They felt me. They they, they felt uh, you felt a, 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 a timing to go in and just put in some nice support there. Thank you. Yeah, massaging the stiffness as we <laughs> talked about. <laughs> Sir 3K, keep this safe for work now. 
Det är så. Okay, PG-13 filter is on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have voice control on, <laughs> on, on 3K. Um, And Aka Marco 69. Martin, you have learned so much in the last three years. It would be such a shame to give up without putting all your knowledge to good effect in a new machine. We're all with you. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> and meanwhile, I did what I've been so apprehensive to do. Now I have my uh, vibraphone template. Thank you everyone for yeah. keeping us Did company. you notice how we derailed you with talking about something else? You yeah. just got to it then. Yeah, I got to it. Yeah. Took me some time. Now we can insert this into look at this. Beautiful. Oh. And look does it look strange now? Yes. But we, we have it? plates. Oh we have plates, everyone. <laughs> can we fix it? Yes. So let's go to drum kit assembly. Let's hide this for now. Fredrik Johansson, I'll stay here until more machine 20 if necessary. <laughs> oh, Yahoo! Andrew Texiera, engineers don't make mistakes, they make revisions. Yahoo! That's funny. That's a good one. They make happy revisions. Um, okay, so I designed it from the origin and the machine is not around its center. So perhaps... We should start to work with the center because as you can see both these registrators and the vibraphone is like ending up over here. Um, let me think. Wow, here we come again with Kamakaji. Martin, I led a team that builds rockets, and I've applied many things I learned from you in my project. What? <laughs> okay, <laughs> name, name, please name me once. This, That's so cool. This is super fun to hear. Ne can you give some examples? It's like, angle grinder is good for mistakes. <laughs> 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 What would it be? Okay, so we're on the mid plane here. Okay, I'm having to do some surgery here. Um, I want to move everything over. Let me see how I can do this. Uh, or what should I do? Are we still on point number three? Yes. Okay, no, no, three we rows. Yeah, we're almost done with point number three. Oh, I just want to see a mole. Yes, 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 yes. Soon, soon, <laughs> soon. Um, so I'm thinking about how to structure the CAD because everything ends up over there. But I thought... What I'm thinking about, should I move the bars or should I move the machine? Um... Move to the bar, see if they have some piña colada for you right there. <laughs> <laughs> some design piña coladas. It's funny that piña coladas have been like the, the symbolic drink of like relaxing, but does people even drink them? I don't think I've ever drank them. Me neither. Maybe that's... Why the previous machines failed. There we have it. There we have it. Tune in Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I'm going to try to keep my mm, tongue correct in my mouth and fix it here. No, I have to think. I have to think. And Michael 249 here from a quote from Edison. I've not failed 10,000 times to build a light bulb. I successfully found 10,000 ways that don't work and that we can exclude. <laughs> woot, woot. <laughs> That's so nice. That is so nice. Let's 
Simon Brun. Had a thought this morning. When physics simulation comes into play, if Linus PC is not enough, could it be possible to offload calculations to the fans? Oh. And that's something I, I still see that question come, a lot, come up a lot in chat. What happened to the Linus Tech PC? And it's going to be unpacked when it start, when we are about to do some physics simulations. It's right here. Yeah, we have it there. That's a teaser for you. I would love to, I would love to also to have uh, everyone engage in that part. That's why th this project, I think, is going to be amazing because we have a digital file. We have one and the same thing uh, to share. And I would love to see the YouTube videos from anyone and um, with the CAD and everything uh, and with your physics simulations. It's so much fun. That will be so much fun. We have an update from, the, from Kamakaji with the rockets. Okay, cool. Your lessons on feature creep, organizational skills, and believing in your project have been huge. You see? Not, mm. not all the time you talk the talk and walk the walk, Martin, but you inspire people to do that. Fantastic. That was so, that was fun, so fun to hear. Um, and also a continuation. I have the I Believe Blueprint poster up next to my desk, and I look at it whenever I need inspiration to be creative and stay determined. Woot woot. Oh, that's super fun. So the organizational skills is probably where you would be most contested from other people. <laughs> but the ter determination, uh, I'll, I'll take that one, uh, definitely. I think you have shown that at least. Ex except for right now when I can't determine what to move to what. Um, so it's a philosophical change. Um, okay, I'm going slow here. I should probably move the bars. Yeah, let's move the bars and I, I catted this the wrong way. So everything comes is together with this mid midpoint here. So now I just have to find out how to, um, uncouple oh that's the point okay everything turns blue that's a good start oh we like blue um, let me find the middle plate this is so much easier than I thought But now also everything kind of died. Huh. Here's the midpoint, okay? <laughs> Ad McCarron. I get motivation from the wooden CNC Wilson that sits on my desk. He's a tough <laughs> manager to satisfy. <laughs> and we all can attest to that one. He's sitting up there just judging us the whole day. With that smile. I know what you're thinking about, Wilson. That's funny. <laughs> so, I made it this far. Oh, it is a rectangular pattern. Then I know what to do. Donny Carnes. I see the whole long-term Marvel Machine project as a new type of art I call engineering photorealism, celebrating all the blemishes of the engineering process that few people get to see. Oh, that's really nice. But that I'll I'll take that one as well because because uh, yeah, that's like for some reason I just love to be transparent around this. I just love to share this. Um, so much more than music making, which is in actually interesting. I just feel somehow that the composing should be like a magic trick behind. And that's stupid. I should, I know it's super popular, like Jacob Collier is super popular. It just shows how he does everything. Uh, but in this process, like where it's not only the, it's the learning thing, like when we're writing the design requirements together, 
yes, we're writing design requirements, but most of all, like we're learning at the same time. And so, yeah, I'll, 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 I think that's super fun. And I managed to move one manual. Now I should be able to do it faster on the other two. So. Also, that's the. That's the projected point. Donnie says, Martin, you're making history right now. <laughs> I mean, this is what we need. We need to hear this. Yeah. Nicest, nicest corner of the internet. Linus Öberg. It also becomes a lot more genuine. There we go. I'm just showering you with praise now so that you can make these tough decisions with the vibraphone. Can you tell? <laughs> Hannes is, uh, Hannes is um, like tuned into um, when I need a little bit of a booster. Yep. Yeah. It's... There's the middle line. So now I can move. Ah, okay. So this, what happened here then? We broke the rectangular pattern somewhere. Mike Perry, a engineer extraordinaire. <laughs> When I heard this project was starting again, I had faith that it will succeed this time. It can be done. Anything can be done as long as you keep moving forward. Cheers, you mad lads. That's so nice. Cheers. Woo! I, I think like for, for, for everyone else who just loves, for the 200 million people that saw the first machine, they're not going to hear about this until the first music video. Yeah. And in the first music video, like with the first song, uh, there should be some callback, like some five second documentary in the middle about like the process. And the story for them at that point is going to be so easy to understand. Yeah. This person built this machine and it wasn't, and wanted a better one and spent five years and now built a better one and tried even another one in between. Wow, that's going to be like such a simple story. <laughs> um, and uh, they are going to love it uh, when they can enjoy the music of the new machine. Until then, it's only all the true Av engineers who hangs us with us right now who, who are interested in the process itself, which is so, so niche. Yeah. They're here watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe unfold right here. <laughs> the true hardcore believers. <laughs> Watch everything. Although I cringe with the believe. I want to write, make a t-shirt called I Believed. Hope is not a strategy. What are you saying now? <laughs> That's the backbone of our whole project. Belief? I believe. And you keep playing the X Files theme as well, and that's I I I want to believe. <laughs> yeah, that's more that's more my thing now. I want to I believe. want to believe. Okay, <laughs> I managed to uh, move this over. Let me fix the last one. Let's head over here so you can see that we're going in the good direction. Yes, yeah, so, so maybe what I'm referring to is that I believed a little bit too much on the on the previous machine. I was like. Oh, yeah, it looks... This can't go wrong, can it? Yeah, it looks dope. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, on this machine, I'm like, uh, yeah, let's not... But right now, it's looking looking, looking pretty fascinating. Um, on this machine, I, I want to verify. I don't want to believe. I want to verify. Sievert Fjellstad Madsen. Make one that says, I still believe. <laughs> Just a little duct tape on the merch. <laughs> I still believe. <laughs> uh, 
No more belief for, for Sir Cadalot. Now it's verifying. Now that's it's the, verifying. That's my whole life. I believe. What do I have left? That, that's why, why I was inspired by this Duplantis uh, Swedish pole vault jumper. The look in, uh, in his eyes. Um, looking at the bar. That was on 6 meters and 20 centimeters. Which is like higher than your house, basically. Um, the determination in just going over that bar on the third attempt. That makes me want to believe. It's like what you're going to see on Friday when it's time for me to set a new bench press record. Ow! I'm just jinxing it right now. Yeah, you. Oh, <laughs> that was the jinx of the century. It's, oh no, I don't want to deal with pissed off Sir 3K for like two months because you missed your personal I will, best. I will find something to. No, I remember last time it was pain. <laughs> Hannes was going. What was that? You were going for 150 at that point. Yeah. And you 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 stopped at 147.5, and you were down for like seven months. Or something. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really recovered yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the story is cool because Hannes is doing like feet up bench press, which is your weaker. Yeah, because I busted my back like two months ago. Yeah. So I've been doing strictly like feet up bench press. And you're still going to... Um... Break my regular record. Yes. Yeah. Why not? I believe. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Okay. Where should I go? Is it here? So... No. Cognomarco. The reason we can't let go is because deep inside we still hope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's true. That is true. You're hitting on something very personal here. That hope. Like true, like just truly transparent to everyone. I can't really tell if it's madness or if it's um, something sane. That hope. I don't know if it's an escape, escapism to just try to escape from the mundanity of 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 existence, or if it's just if is this maybe that is the maybe that's when we make our most beautiful <laughs> things. Yes. When we're like, ah, I need to figure out something that feels like meaning. Yes, that's when magic happens. Remember Bakka Plan in Gothenburg, the first mold machine. Nobody knew was what we were doing. <laughs> you know what kids does, Hannes, when they're playing? They never ask why. It's like you run to your friend, you, you, you watch kids asking each other to play. And it's like, do you want to play? The other kid is not asking like, why? What would it be good for? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What's what's the point? They say yes or no, depending on if, if they want to or if they have time, but they don't say why. They don't motivate. Why? And th they just execute. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We have some vibraphone bars. And my friends, it was a slow slug, but we're done with step three. So let's go home. We're on to the three rows. Yes. Oh, the satisfaction. Ow. <laughs> so um, now we can start to kind of see. Uh, I see a small error perhaps could happen. <laughs> I know where with you're going the, with, this. <laughs> with those bars. <laughs> It seems I can be tricky. Could work. <laughs> I'm not an engineer. Do you mean the interference where the wheel is halfway through the bars? Yeah. Could be a problem. I don't know. That's a good observation right there. Sir 3K. <laughs> so let's first of all look at these hit points. And yeah, we're... 
So we're going to run into issues and that's why we're doing this. The Edison quote is like, we're going to find out ways that we can't, wrong ways to do this. So, seen from the top, which is the marble perspective. And a chat, the chat is kindly reminding me on and off here about all the bouncing marbles and the mid-air collisions. Has Din been thought about yet? Ooh, no. Mid-air collisions after bounce. Ah. Well, there we go, chat. <laughs> I didn't... Okay, good one, everyone. Because I was only thinking after the bounce. This is not working. This is not working at all. Um, Not even actually... Okay, this changes everything. Oh, I'm, st I'm, I'm stupid. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I see that now. Why did, uh, yeah, you, you also didn't see it before. I thought that you had a master plan for this. No, I missed this entirely. It's so funny. Well, maybe that's maybe that helps us. Maybe that's Oh, also for the drums. Oh. But you know why? What? We didn't build this physically so we can change it in CAD. Yeah. Okay, I am so... Let's find I a way missed, to solve that then. I've missed this completely. I missed this completely. Should we just make a three meter wide machine? There we go. I missed this completely. So for anyone uh, who haven't missed this... Ooh, now I'm going to see if I can be smart. Can I be smart? Yes. Um, one second, everyone, and this will be revealed. Sieves um, 293, put the top row furthest forward. Would it work if it shifts a little to the side? Would you catch in front of each row? Oh, the, those are all great um, suggestions. Offset the drops. Uh, hang on, I'm just looking for my sketch pen. There it is. And we're going to try something here. Look at the spiral layout I dropped in Dropbox, Mr. Gonsonator. Let's see if we have something he over here. Hmm. So this was a fun this was a fun realization and maybe it helps me with the decision making that's why, why I'm excited I'm preparing a sketch here meanwhile Oh I'm sending it to the wrong iPad I'm sending it to your iPad I'm trying to airdrop a screenshot to my sketch pad and I'm airdropping it to our stream pad, I think. Okay. Take a look at this outside the box right here, then. Wow. <laughs> that is beautiful. That belongs to the tower idea um, that someone has submitted. Okay, now I have air. I fixed airdrop on my iPad. What is happening? Yeah, I now I'm sending to yours. I think now I should be receiving something. Um, I tried to take a, I tried to be smart and take a screenshot from CAD so I can sketch on top of the CAD. 
Uh, do, 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 just some technical issues here. You have to entertain the people's 3K. <laughs> Cukey crumbs. Chat just anger grinded Martin's idea. Pain is temporary. Yeah, it was lovely. Lovely that you kept me from... Um, Can you catch them before the next drop? Desert Pillar. Badisketu just shifted sideways a bit. Yeah, I'm just trying to get airdrop to work. Everyone who's been in this situation knows what. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so. Do I have to revert with taking a picture? Oh, hang on, I'm gonna take a picture. Mr. Gonsonator, splay the bars out a bit so the marbles bounce in different directions. I'm gonna take a picture of my screen. <laughs> this is high tech. There we go. And now I'm going to be with you soon. There we go. Don't mind, tilt the top row into the machine, then make a catcher inside the machine. Okay, so after a very long time, I'm now ready to sketch on the on the sketch pad. Um, but let me just show this first, if we go to the sketch pad, Hannes. Oh, yeah. So, um... I was only thinking about uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I was only thinking about how the marbles would get to the plates. Yeah. So I had this idea here, and then that's the back row, and then comes the middle row here, and everything is good. Do, 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 everything do. is golden. And then the third row. Everyone knows already what will happen, but I'm gonna. Show it anyway. Third row here. And we're hitting everything. Except. <laughs> 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 what chat? Just, have you thought about mid-air collision? So what happens down back here on the red row? Well, they bounce forward, don't they? Yeah. And I thought, yeah, they're going to be collected. But it's like in Ocean's uh, 11, the laser or 12. These green marbles have to go through a laser field of red marbles. It won't work. It just will not work. But uh, do are marbles dropped on plates all the time? Is a constant waterfall? Oh, so you could take that in aspect when you program the music. That's brilliant, 3K. That is kind of brilliant limitations that is kind of brilliant huh now now i'm getting surprised again because you could just say what would you have to say you would have to say that you can't drop a green marble close to a red marble immediately like afterwards which means you can't play x files well <laughs> well we scrapped this idea then <laughs> no but it's it's it, it's it's a cool it's a cool um it's a cool marcus hoffman can you funnel them in the blank spaces between the vibraphone plates yeah let's sketch that uh, let's do a net there that would be... Yeah, do a net there. Take them here. Yeah. Tennis net. Uh, take them here. And then take them here. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Yes, love it. <laughs> ugly, ugly, ugly. Because we would need to do it twice. Yes, twice is good. This was maybe somewhere here that I thought that we would end up with today 
is that um, the dream is too big. Yeah, go back to one, go back to one whole row, and doing the module idea, so the whole vibraphone can be picked up and taken out. Do the mandracular module idea, so basically, um, just have this row, this module in the middle. Spread out the plates and offset the drops. Yeah, so if, if if we go if we go to CAD, um, oh they, sh okay, so this is wrong since I, so the rows should have been offsetted, um, since I fixed since I moved the plates, I've done actually yes, something. You can wrong. split everything up here. They don't need to be. Leave gaps like you did with the top and the bottom row. Do that on the main row as well. For, first of all, um, I'm going to shift uh, this one. Let's do half a plate to the left. Because that was my idea. There we go. But why is it not? Maybe because this little line needs to be perpendicular. And a lot of people are saying also, just yes. angle the top row so you can collect the marbles behind. Ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> no space. There's a wheel there. As you can see, the the, sp the space is a little tight <laughs> <laughs> with the wheel right now. Um, keep the ideas coming though. Um, okay, so now we have shifted. Now we have shifted the lower row. So we 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 still have twenty five millimeters, which means okay, yeah. Let's let's shift the the higher row. Where do I do that? Uh, da, 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 da. Where's the sideways position constraint? Oh, is it on the mid? I don't even see where it constrains. Oh yeah, here. Let's remove this. Let's remove this. Also here, 13 peeps. If you made enough space between mid row plates to solve the mid air collisions, you might as well just put the top row plates in those spaces. You can move it, move them down then. If you don't want three rows. That's true. Hold that thought. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, anyway, um, I fixed the issue where everything was aligned. So now everything is um, zigzag. But it's not enough zigzag, depending because we want 40 millimeter marbles and we can't make sure to make them bounce super straight. Tell me the last one again. Uh, let's see. If you made enough space between mid row plates to solve the mid air collisions, you might as well just put the top row plates in those spaces. That was somewhere like what I was thinking. If you make space in the mid section, don't have it to be one big consistent. Basically vibraphone. putting the white Vib keys up and the black keys down here. No then you can remove the whole row if you just make everything wider then yeah this make the machine three meter wide is 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 an option <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, that's an option i'm dead serious yeah i'm dead serious i was just thinking uh that you could make gaps in the middle lane so that no no two plates are on the same lane Spread it out. Yeah. Yeah. So 
something that I really feel like doing, and trust me, I really feel like doing this, is to go crazy on the width. All our problems, except transportation and, and ginormous problems, would be solved. So just for fun, can I extrude this? I can. Let's add another meter. There we go. Boom. <laughs> I could stand in the middle of the machine like a clown. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> like a clown. I just crawl like Michael Jackson. I come up from the floor. <laughs> oh no, he's been cancelled after his death. Uh, let's take another artist that comes up through the floor. <laughs> what other artist comes up through the floor? Everyone. Okay. Like a cool artist. I I came up on the floor once uh, uh, through the floor with the music box with the, the, the Dutch guys. Yeah. Um, Nick and Simon, I think. In Ahoy Arena. Um, where actually the Eurovision Fest Song Contest final was last year. In that arena. Anyway, if we make this wide, all our like space issues goes away forever and ever. Um, so that's our that's a trade off we can make. <sighs> Lot to marinate on. So hear me out on this one. Hear me out on this brand new idea that has come up today. Just for fun, okay. One single row of vibraphone bars. We're going to, oh no, they're like that. Ah. Uh, I didn't do this nice. Can I can I select them like this? Okay. So what turned me off the idea to have one row and to have them interchangeable was the changing time between songs. One of the things. But that was fixed. By Mandracula. <laughs> Mandracule? <laughs> Mandracule, thank you. Um, so let's just say for fun. Check this out. Boom. Ba ba boom. Ba ba boom. And we can have them in order from lowest to highest. So this is now one module. Um, so let's head over here. Imagine. Imagine all the notes are there. No space issues anymore. <laughs> we can play all the songs we want. So here's my... Here's the kicker. This is a module. Let's copy this and let's insert a new one. So over here, by the technicians, they're preparing the next song in this module over here. Oof. With resonator tubes and all the notes, everything. Wait, we're gonna have the same Ludwig Schubert says, Martin, the drum width no longer has to be the machine width. You can flare out with bowden cables, etc. Yeah. Programming drum can stay small. Vibraphone can get wide. No no contradiction anymore. Yes. Uh, Yahoo. Very good point. Um, I'm, just, I'm just going to... Um, so you heard... I can tell that you heard me say that I'm going to have everything in line. Bowden cable connection to marble gates allows for flaring out 
of instrument hit points while keeping prog drum um, uh, what is opposite to wide not thin narrow uh, thank you <laughs> that's the that's the, the programming drum narrow so I, I just noted down there it's uh, so true very good point but what I just realized here sir 3k is that we'll have the same problem with the drums because when the marbles comes from the vibraphone they'll also pass through the uh, the drum kit um, hit points And a shout out to Joachim Stoll for his nice super chat here. Thank you so much for that support. It means a lot to us. Indeed. Thanks. It's um It's crazy that I didn't see this first. <laughs> well, <laughs> and you sometimes need to dream an experiment. So so what I'm also excited about, like we're looking at something potentially much simpler than what we've been looking at before. So what I really did not want this time was a convoluted thing where things are obstructing other things. So um, this morning, we changed the, the, the height footprint. We lowered the whole machine and we talked about... Um, how to be able to transport this machine despite it's being pretty good uh, big and maybe this will allow us to pull everything out uh, in the width because now maybe what i'm looking at is an idea to go back to one of the most um one of the first things that i said i said that nothing would be in front of each other like mechanically so if, if if we check um the previous machines not that one sorry <laughs> um everything is so convoluted everything is like spidering into each other there's no clear access and this just makes everything so complicated so yeah if we make the machine large we have that issue that the machine is large. But if we make the machine convoluted, what I mean, everything is in front of everything else. So what happened a lot of times is that I couldn't repair things without removing 100 other things. So imagine live on tour that the whole machine is accessible from all the components are accessible. So I'm going to do the same trick as before. So, and then like we have to, so the Elon Musk thing with SpaceX, like the less dumb design requirements. So the thing that to make the machine small is maybe not a design requirement. To make the machine transportable is, right? Yeah. So I'm just talking myself into a ginormous machine here. <laughs> I love it. So let me show you on the sketch pad what I'm talking about now. Uh, so, if you think, I'm, I'm going to draw now, like everything, programming tracks. And it is true that the programming drum can be, doesn't have to be straight, but. Okay, hit points. Let's start with some hit points. So, hit point. Hit point. Hit point. Hit point. Ah. <sighs> how should how should I do this? Red dots are hit points. No, red crosses are hit points. Hmm. 
It's an ugly vibraphone though. If we do it like this. Okay, so I'm just pointing out, like, mechanically, this is the simplest thing of them all. Because we just have access here. Nothing is... None of these green lines are crossing. See? Yeah. Which means it's not convoluted. And no of the marble paths are crossing. Maybe you could have, like, so if, if you had a deflector, so say say that you wanted to hit, um, you wanted to actually hit these two vibraphone notes. You don't want to make a hole there. You want to have two points there. Maybe you can have some kind of shield or something that deflects marbles from interfering. Oh, okay. Um, with these so those marbles are never entering um, and the point that someone else just made is that with the with the Bowden cable connection let's make them um, orange we could actually do this we could do we could do this without problem and we don't even have to have the same we can do whatever we can do this so the new problem is the mid-air collisions actually that's actually what we're getting into here hmm Dee, dee, dee. A lot to think about. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, and, yes. Uh, the clock is ticking for us here as well. Our day is nearing its end, my friend. Yeah. So this was a super good meeting with the bull. I <laughs> knew that this was going to be difficult. But we I just, started. Yes. So I'm going to marinate on this. I'm going to work on it tonight. Mm. Um, and... Super good fundamental things have come out of this stream. So, and I can't thank everyone enough for the great suggestions, also for all the fantastic support. And most of all, my friend Sir 3K with me here in the studio. Take it away. Woo, 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 woo. And I see a lot of you in chat uh, having suggestions here. Upload them to Dropbox. Perhaps Marty can check them out later in the evening now. So, if you have brilliant solutions, it's easier if you just explain them and put them out on Dropbox. But you know what? It's been a beautiful day. It's been magical today. Thank you so much for being here watching us. Thank you for your support through the super chats and all your ideas. It's been a really, really fun day today. You know what? See you in the next one. Take care.